Okay, so we talked about sewing like canvas and fabric and with a sewing machine and and stuff. Well, let's talk about leather. Well, I love using leather. I try to use leather that has been repurposed um, or recycled from like boots and scraps um, just because, you know, I don't really want to use brand new animal hide because of my personal choice. <laughs> so, yeah, here's some of the tools I use, you know. Um, so, you know, I... These were my great grandfather's. He was a tailor, and he sort of shares. I'm guessing these are from turn of the century, teens, maybe twenties. Uh, there's no maker mark, so I don't really know uh, who made them. But um, I've had these since I was a kid. I remember playing with them and getting yelled at to not run with scissors, especially giant shears. Uh, but this is good for cutting big pieces of leather, and um, yeah. So, um, there we go. And then, you know, I got my little Japanese ones for cutting the thread and stuff. Um, let's do different things. So, yeah, you know, I, I use leather a lot. I, um, this is an awe for going through the leather if, when you're sewing. Um, but you need to do a pattern um, unless you're really good. And if you're not using a sewing machine, you're doing hand sewing. And they have these little pattern wheels here. And um, what I did is I numbered them. I have a set of four with different spaces, and then I made a little template, and I could decide how big of the thread um, spacing I want to do for whatever kind of piece I'm doing for the strength or decorative. Um, there's different things like uh, this is a, a rivet. It's a copper rivet that with a little cap, and then it has a special tool here that you punch it through and yeah, it's good stuff. Here's one thing I use the rivet for. You can see the rivet is holding on this little clip. This is uh, my little tool roll I just started for my uh, vintage Vespa. And um, you know, it's, it's not beautiful, but it's just meant to carry my tools and the little saddle bag and so forth. Or, you know, I make other little bags. This is all my tools for my uh, Royal Enfield motorcycle I own and like I said you see the rivets and this one's been used a lot more and made a buckle and punched in the little British symbol little flag little jack um, you know in, in another video you saw this my uh, my uh, wrench roll for metric for many for my many little wrenches and you know I just I just like how the leather feels it has such an antique looking or you know I like having tools with places to put them sometimes too. Um, what are the tools do I use? Here's another hole making little device you for doing uh, hand sewing, just a little punch and you know, I have this hard thick rubber plate here and I just take a piece of leather and I take my handy Thor hammer. This is one of my favorite new hammers I got and you just punch it and it goes right through. Boom. You know, what's good about this hammer, too, is, um, you know, they, a lot of people use these to cut, to, to, for hole, for making holes in leather. And I like these, but, you know, with the neck throw, sometimes you can't get what, to where you need to go. So I invested in a whole little set. You can see there are 12 metric uh, punches and the same kind of deal. You put it there. Punch it. Boom. One of the things I'm using this for is, where is it? Aha! This is going to be a hood. Uh, I sewed it up with my sewing machine, added a little uh, trick line, uh, which is, <laughs> if you don't know what trick line is, this is trick line. It's used in uh, film and theater uh, to tie things. Just really thin. Uh, it's rated. I forgot the rating is on strength, but it's uh it takes a lot of it takes a lot to break this i've never seen anybody stupid enough to tie anything heavy enough to break this but you know of course there's always the first time but i uh put the thread in there just to give it a little structure a little thickness and then i cut out a little leather spot here and this is where i'm gonna punch holes and um um for the eyes to see and then i'm gonna have a little leather uh, where is it couple little leather patches down here 
maybe that way, I don't know. And that'll be attached to another leather strap, and that's what attaches to the straight jacket. And I'm gonna age it all up. Um, let me let me punch this and see uh, see how that goes. So I'm gonna, for this, I'm gonna set this piece of wood block to have a hard surface. I'm gonna put in the leather or the rubber. There you go. And so I want to punch in a whole bunch of holes. Well, one of the things uh, I stitched it, I hand stitched this using a hand stitcher, which is a nice little device. Uh, it has a big needle, it has thread, um, obviously, it has thread, and a little spool. And uh, here, let me show you how uh, I used it for this. Okay, so yeah, that's how I, I hand stitched this. And like I said, I didn't want to do in the sewing machine. It would have been too tricky and hard. So I actually cut the leather, glued it with some PVA polyvinyl acetate glue, best glue in the world <laughs> um, for doing books and uh, paperwork. And it's just, uh, it's flexible and archival. It's just great. So I glued it down there so it wouldn't move. Uh, you know, used my little uh, wheel to go around to kind of get a decent look edge and then i used um my one of my my awes to punch i think actually i think i just kept on punching that to get the holes then i just sewed it up and now i need to figure out where the holes are going well i after i made this i took it to my scanner scanned it uh laid out the holes on it on it and then printed this then i'll put this down here um probably need to tape it here give me a second uh let me get some tape I know I got some tape somewhere in my studio. Uh, okay. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so let's make sure it's nice and sturdy. Let's get some tape there. Do some tape there. Let's tape there. And let's be crazy and let's do tape here. Just so it doesn't shift on me and look stupid. And then I'm gonna take uh, my number six and uh, let me clean it out. Uh, I like these two because you just, you know, keep on sticking it through and then it comes right there and cleans itself out. Okay, so like I said, this is, I'm gonna use my Thor, made in England hammer. And as replaceable has, this is a soft rubber. This is more like a, uh, uh, you know, uh, not a urethane. Uh, uh, whatever kind of head uh, that big word U F M S W whatever ultra high molecular dense plastic whatever so yeah I'm just gonna lay it on the hole and then punch it through and just keep on going to the next one and so forth Yeah, and there you go. And these are the eye holes for the uh, straight jacket hood that I'm making for a project. Um, yeah, well, one of the other things is so I'm gonna have this little piece of leather here and I'm, I wanna attach it so I do the same thing and figure out where I want my sewing holes to be and punch them out and then use my hand sewer. Like, you know, sometimes I like using it, sometimes I like doing hand stitching, it all depends on the material and how easy it is to do it. Um, and then I want to rivet this onto another piece of like, you know, it would be like a strip for the uh, like a belt. So I will use a copper rivet right here. And basically what I do is 
you put it, you drill, drill, or punch a hole, I should say. Don't drill. Yeah, don't drill leather. It's always better to punch leather. It's cleaner holes. <laughs> um, a punch a hole in it, stick it in, going this way. Then uh, you you put it put it on the side. You put the washer, and then this little tool here has a giant hole that goes deep, and you punch it down tight. Then you cut it just maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more uh, proud. And then there's kind of an anvil, rounded anvil part, and you put it over and if it rounds it off. Look, let's see. You can see the the rivet there. And then on that side, let's see if I can get a good close up. And it just does a nice little finish round off. And I like how the copper patinas, and you could you could artificially patina it and stuff. So yeah. So and like I said, like this. Find, I found this god years ago, and I don't remember where. And price tag's gone. But I've used it just thousands and thousands and thousands of times, and it's like one of my favorite objects for doing leather. Um, also, like getting good uh, wax cord. This is 0 .35, uh, 0 0.035 thick wax cord, and um, I like the strong stuff because I don't like things breaking or falling apart. Um, buying a good blade, you know, this is uh, the Olafa, whatever, I never could say the name right, Main Japan, uh, the originator of the snap, you know, uh, you just snap the blade and get a new blade anytime it gets dull. And this is the original maker. I don't like those cheap knockoffs. You know, I like buying, supporting the original makers of tools. I'm kind of big on that. I like buying the stuff made in the U.S., but if there's a better product somewhere else, like this hammer made in England, I'm going to buy it. And sometimes I just have to buy the cheap, you know, Chinese stuff that breaks after a few uses. Um, here's another piece of like a hard plastic for doing punches too, or... Oh, let's see. So I could put it on this, and this this plastic came with my set of uh, uh, of punch my punches. Wow, that does, definitely doesn't work as good as the uh, rubber. Yeah, well, see if I put it on. See how if it's better on this. Eh, it could be the table bouncing too. <laughs> Fail. Um, one of the other neat things I, I like doing is, is this is a wood burning tool. It's a wood burning tool, and I use it to do the edges, to darken them, to age them. Um, but it also has all these little fittings. Z. You could almost so you could brand the leather. Um, I don't think I have any examples of that. No. Um, but it's kind of cool. And then, you know, I just got so much of the little tools. This is for like making belts, rounding off corners for when you're making belts. You just kind of put it, it's the thickness of the belt, and you do the same thing. You hammer it. And it cuts it off. I mean, this table is too bouncy. You really, really need to do it on the cement floor, but you get the idea. You know, having, I, I like having like a white china marker to mark the leather, you know, to see it easier. And pencils. And what else do I have in here? Just other little clips, you know, little binder clips. And to attach the two pieces of leather that I'm going to sew and. Exactly. Boom. And, uh, you know, some of you may remember in my my uh, casting uh, videos and in my leather forming, I made this for my ice pick, my Kenko ice pick, you know. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's nice learning how to make stuff for yourself. So, you know, it's just a lot cheaper to do. And, you know, for prop making, you know, you make stuff all the time. You're repairing stuff all the time. You're adding uh, structure to things, um, making a freak show banner, you want those leather ends to give it realism. Realism? Yeah, sure. Realism. So yeah, well, that's my leather making tools. Um, 
Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, yeah. Uh, subscribe. Check it out. Pass it around. Enjoy yourself. Um, I will see you on the next video. Ciao.